Hey everyone, welcome to Relatively Refined. My name is Paula. In today's video, we are going to be making some authentic New England style baked beans. I'm going to tackle a chore that I have been putting off for a long time. I'll take you along while we shop and look for some spring and Easter inspiration at one of my favorite local stores. And then finally, we'll finish up with a fun and easy paper craft that you can do for yourself or with children or grandchildren. All right, let's get started. All right. To get started with the baked beans, we are going to use these navy pea beans. They are a small white bean that you can get at pretty much any grocery store, and I'm going to use a pound of them. And the first thing we need to do is to give them a good rinse. The first thing you want to do is to give your beans a good rinse and to pick through them. Sometimes there are small pebbles that have made their way into the bag, so you want to Put them under some running water and then run your hands through and inspect the beans to make sure that you're not getting any small pebbles or any split beans or anything like that. Once you've given them a good rinse, the next step is to put them in a bowl and cover them with water. So the beans have to soak overnight in the bowl of water. Homemade baked beans is a two-day process. It's really hard to rush it. So here I'm just putting them in a bowl and I'm going to cover them with some cold water and then I'll just set them on my counter and let them soak overnight. They'll plump up and absorb some of that water and they'll just be a little bit softer, which will reduce the cooking time the second day. Okay, so these have been soaking all night and you can see that they have really plumped up and absorbed a whole lot of that water. Here is my bean pot. This is what I will cook them in. But first what I need to do is I need to get these into a pot and put them on the stove top and they need to boil for about an hour. So let me go ahead and get that started. The beans are boiling away. You just want to keep checking them, first of all, to make sure that there's enough liquid in there. You don't want them to boil dry. And also then just to check on the progress. They still have a ways to go. So I will let those keep on boiling. So the beans have been boiling now for quite some time. So what I'm going to do to check to see if they're done is I'm going to scoop a few beans out and then I'm going to blow across them. And if you blow across them and they split open, like if you can, I don't know if you can see that, but this, the skin part kind of splits when you blow across it, that means that they're done enough now to be able to put them in the bean pot to cook. So let's go ahead and get started on doing that. I have a strainer, a colander set up over a um, Pyrex, a glass Pyrex, um, measuring cup because I'm going to save the bean water. You want, you do not want to drain the beans and lose the bean water. So I'm going to drain them and hang on to that water. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to season up the beans. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of the bean water and pour it into a smaller container. And I'm gonna season this up. It's just easier to season this water. And 
to the bean water, I am going to add, let's see, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of dry mustard. I'll add a teaspoon or so of dry mustard. And then you want to add about a cup of sweetener. Now my mom always used just plain white sugar. And my grandmother, uh, my dad's mom, she used um, molasses. Some people use maple syrup. I'm going to use a combination of molasses and white sugar. So I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of white sugar. Add that to the bean liquid and then I'm going to do a quarter cup of the molasses and I am using grandma's molasses that's the kind that my grandmother always used so I'm sure there are other flavors but this is what we always had at home so that's what I'm going to use so we will pour in about a quarter cup of molasses and I think the molasses gives it a, de a depth of flavor that you don't get with just the white sugar. So we'll let that all drain out. Let me get a spoon and I will give this a good stir. Scrape out all of this molasses. And then I'm gonna stir this around to combine it. And then I will season it up also with some salt and pepper. Get the uh, dry mustard. There's my oven telling me it's preheated to 300. You're gonna cook these low and slow, as they say. All right. Set that aside and let me get some salt and pepper and season this up with some salt and pepper. I think in addition to the salt and pepper, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon or so, maybe half a teaspoon of onion powder to the liquid and then some salt and pepper. And you don't need too much salt because you're gonna be adding salt pork and that is salty as we all know. So I'll get this nice and combined here. Get the lumps out and get ready for the next step. All right, so here is my bean pot. I am going to put my beans into my bean pot. Let's see if I can do this without making a big old mess. So we're gonna add some beans in there. And then I will also add the salt pork to that. Let me add in some of the salt pork, kind of sprinkle that in there. And some more beans and so on. And let me get all these in there and then we'll add the liquid. All right, got the last of the beans in there. I'm going to add in my salt pork. Now my mom would always just put the salt pork just on the top when she made the beans, but I'm going to just kind of stir it around so it's throughout there. And I'll hold this up so you can see the beans and the salt pork are in there. Now I'm gonna add my seasoned liquid over top of the beans. And this may be enough. Nope, not quite. So you want to make sure that the beans are covered with liquid. So I'm going to take my reserved bean liquid and pour this over so that the beans are completely covered by the liquid. And it will evaporate. So you do have to watch and make sure that they, it doesn't completely start burning. So you can see that I've got the beans, the bean liquid, the seasoned liquid, and the salt pork in there. I'm gonna put a top on this and I'll stick this in the oven at 300 degrees and it'll cook for several hours, but we'll keep on checking it. I am going to set a baking sheet in there 
just in case there's any spillage. These are going in. Set that in there. All right, and we will let that cook away. All right, here is my next project. I'm almost embarrassed to show you this, but this is what is under my sink. And it really just needs to be organized. So I am going to try to do that right now. The first thing that I needed to do was to completely empty out that cupboard and see what it was that was in there. Okay, so everything is out from under there, and I'm going to give that a good wipe down, and I can see right here that that is starting to bubble up. I'm sorry about the shadow. You can see what I'm talking about right there, where the moisture is causing that to warp a little bit. So I'm going to maybe see if I can put something down to stop that from happening anymore. And here is what <laughs> I took out from there just a whole bunch of stuff. I need to go through that and just see what's in there, what do I use, and what needs to be put someplace else. It really is amazing how much stuff that you can accumulate in a small space. I mean, that is a double cupboard. You know, it's two doors, but it's not a huge space. And I was frankly, <laughs> amazed at how much stuff had gotten shoved in there and what happens then is that you don't know what you have and you end up buying doubles of things that you already have because you can't find them or you don't realize it's in there so as with any project it always kind of looks worse before it gets better and I am simply going through each item and determining whether or not it needs to stay under that sink there were many items under there that really have a home somewhere else and that don't need to be under the sink. I just really wanted to keep under the sink those items that I use and reach for on a regular basis. I gave it a good wipe down with my all-purpose spray and then I began kind of sorting the items into categories and grouping them so that I could figure out the most efficient and useful way of storing them under the sink. I wanted to have the things that I reach for regularly up front and then those things that I do use often but not every day more toward the back. In all honesty, there are only a few cleaning products that I reach for again and again, my old standbys. I love Dawn dish soap. I love my Mrs. Myers all-purpose spray. I use my sink scrub and my Dawn power wash. That stuff is amazing, and I use that on all kinds of stuff. So it looks a lot better. It, it's not perfect, and I still need to get a mat or a shelf liner to put underneath all of those things. And I would like to get some sort of container to corral some of my extra things in. But for now, it's definitely a lot more organized, and it really only contains those things that we use on a daily basis. And then over here, this tub of cleaning products are either things that we don't use on a regular basis and um, can be stored elsewhere or they are for car washing and we have a specific bucket for car cleaning supplies out in the garage. So all of these things that are in this bucket right here will most likely get stored in the garage. And then up here are some random odds and ends of things that I need to figure out what to do with them nail polish remover and Epsom salts can go into the bathroom. This is an extra spray bottle that just needs to be washed out. This is a spare um, container of soap that I'm going to bring to school because I'm out of soap at school. So I'm going to bring that for my office at school. And then here are some other random things. This is a um, Bath and Body Works. What are these things called? I forget what they're called. 
a little plug-in type thing. It has a name. I can't think of what it is. But anyway, I don't have any of the little scent, scented oils to plug in there. So I'll probably get some of those, and I'll probably bring this to school as well. So overall, not too bad. And honestly, what did that take me? Maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. And it, it definitely is a lot more organized. Now, it certainly is not Pinterest worthy, but that's okay. At least I know what I have under there. And the things that I use most regularly, which are my Mrs. Myers Lavender All-Purpose Cleaner, Dawn Dish Soap, and then the Dawn Power Wash, along with my Myers Sink Scrub and the Dishwasher Pods, those are all within easy reach, as are my microfiber cloths. So I am overall happy and pleased with the way it all came out. All right, let's check on these beans. Oh, they look like they are probably done. Give them another couple of minutes and they should be perfect. They look delicious. I think what I'm gonna do, because we're in the South, whew, there we go, is I'm gonna add just a little bit of Truy's homemade barbecue sauce to these, and I think they will be perfect. All right, so this is her homemade barbecue sauce. It's a secret recipe, <laughs> but um, it is kind of a hot, sweet, um, whoop, vinegar-based profile. So I'm gonna add just, oh, I don't know, a spoonful, two spoonfuls in there, and stir it around. And I think that will be perfect. And now let's head out and look for a little bit of spring and Easter inspiration. We've been to this store before. It's the French Mercantile, and it's located in Somerville, South Carolina. And I absolutely love this little shop. They have the most beautiful merchandising. When I go in there, it is so beautifully displayed. It makes me want every single item in the store. But I just wanted to get a little dose of spring and Easter pastel colors and flowers and lift my spirits just a little bit. These gorgeous flower bundles are paper and I think they are absolutely beautiful. I did not come home with anything on the day that I was there, but I have since decided that I think I'm going to treat myself to one of those bundles of flowers. Look at the beautiful blue and white. As you know, I'm a huge fan of anything blue and white. Those round pillows were so cute. And I thought these little brass bunny jars were precious. How cute would that look on a side table or a bookshelf? And you could for sure leave that up all spring and into the summer actually. And I love these beautiful brass rabbits. And here's some more of those gorgeous paper flowers. I love how they have them displayed in this basket next to the rabbit. That whole vignette was just so pleasing to the eye. And then this beautiful rabbit print up in that giant dough bowl, the lovely ceramic and pottery vessels, so pretty. And here's some more flowers. The whole color palette is so soothing to the eye. I'm instantly relaxed when I walk into the store.
I love these neutral colored rabbits. I thought they were so cute next to those bee skeps. I have been eyeing those for a couple years now. They've had those at least um, for last year and this year, and I love them. I also really love these tall, skinny cloches, and of course, the blue and white rabbit vase, or pitcher actually. It was so nice just to head out and poke around. I didn't actually come home with anything, but it really got me in the mood to do some kind of springy craft. So let's head back home and try out a fun and easy Easter craft. What you'll need for this very simple craft is just an assortment of scrapbooking paper. I got mine at Joanne Fabrics and I got five different patterns that I thought had pretty pastel Easter and spring like colors. Just choose whatever suits your fancy and you can choose you know five or six different patterns or all the same pattern. Then what you're going to do is cut out an egg shaped template. So I cut mine out of a piece of cardstock and then I simply traced that egg shape on the back side of each of the papers. I was able to, I think, get about 12 or so eggs out of each piece of scrap paper. Here's a look at the eggs traced out on the back of the paper. So yeah, it looks like about 12 eggs per paper. And then the next thing you're going to do is simply just cut out the egg shapes. Once I had my egg shapes cut out, I put them in piles of five since I had five different scrapbooking patterns. Then what I did was I folded each egg shape in half with the right side together. So you'll have five egg shapes per egg that we're going to make. And here you see me just folding them in half and I laid them out so that they were all facing the same direction. In other words, the fat end of the egg was on the same side of each one, if that makes sense. All right, so now I have the five eggs folded in half and I'm simply going to use a glue stick. I tried using Elmer's glue, but it made the paper wrinkle. So the best tool for the job in this case is a simple glue stick. And I put a little bit of the glue on one half of the back side, and then I glued a second egg shape to that. And then I'm gonna repeat the process until all five of the egg shapes are glued together. just making sure that they are evenly placed on one another so that the folded line or the folded side is even on each one. You can see there I'm checking to make sure that it's facing the right direction, that the fat end of the egg is pressed up against the fat end of the other egg. And I'm just gonna repeat this process until I have glued all five of the egg shapes in a stack. And once they're all glued together like that, what you're going to do is to then glue the two final wrong sides together and it unfolds kind of like a honeycomb, like those honeycomb 
table decorations that we, we used to get in the 70s. And there it is. And now you can see how cute does that look with all the different pastel colored scrapbooking papers. And I'm just gonna finish up making these last two eggs. As you can see, I have two more stacks of five different patterns, and I'm gonna glue those together and finish up the project. It really is a fun project. It's definitely something that you could do with children, if you have children or grandchildren. I mean, the only difficult thing for little kids is cutting out, so that's something that you could do ahead of time, and they could easily fold and glue them, and it, it really makes a cute little finished product. You could also put a little bit of thread and make a, a loop out of yarn or twine or something and put it in the center of the whole thing and then you could hang them on a little Easter tree or on a branch that's in a vase or something. That would also be very, very cute. And here's a close-up look at the paper eggs. I think what I'm going to do is just put them in a little basket or bowl or compote or something with some Easter grass when I get some Easter grass and use them as part of the centerpiece for my Easter table. They look so pretty all together. I, I was able to make I don't know, 10 or so, 12 or so eggs out of the scrapbooking paper that I purchased. And as I said, I think the paper was less than a dollar a page. So for $5, you've got a really cute and fun craft. And I had a great time doing it. It was very, very relaxing. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So my sister and I have been busy getting things for the spring shop. We have an online shop and I'll leave the address for the online shop on the screen right here in case you didn't know. But on that shop, we carry items that we love 
and use on a regular basis and we feel that our viewers would love and use as well. So our main times of the year that we restock the shop are fall, Christmas, and then spring, summer. So we have been busy getting our spring and summer stuff um, Play our orders placed and getting our items in. So I just wanted to share with you a few of the things that we will be listing on the shop. And by the time you see this, they should already be listed on the shop. The first thing that we will be listing are these gorgeous La Roche B glasses. This is the iced tea glass. It is stunning. The glass is so clear and it has this adorable little B design on it. We are carrying these in two sizes. So as I said, this is the, the iced tea glass, and then this is the tumbler, which you could use for a mixed cocktail, you could use it as a rocks glass or a juice glass. Both would be stunning on anyone's table. So we'll be carrying these, and we love these glasses. In fact, when we were ordering for the shop, we ordered a few extra for ourselves. Also on the shop, we will be carrying these gorgeous napkins. We had these in brown in the fall, these beautiful block printed napkins. And for spring and summer, we have them in the blue and white. And you know that I will be using these in the blue and white because I absolutely love blue and white. And I think it is classically spring and summer. So we will carry these. We are also carrying these adorable bee coasters. These are made by Chandler Four Corners, which is a Vermont-based company out of my hometown. And these are hand-hooked little wool coasters, and they have this cute bee design on them, and they come in a set of four. So these will also be on the shop. And then, we're, as I said, we're still getting things in, but what we have so far, um, are the bee glasses, the little bee coasters, the beautiful blue and white napkins, and then finally we have these adorable little, well, I guess you would call them trinket dishes, but you could use them as individual salt cellars, and they are made from oyster shells. Let me just show you. So we have several different designs, and they come in these cute little individual mesh bags. So this is the single B design, and it's got this gorgeous gold edging. And then you can see that it is an oyster shell. How cute is that? So we have the single B design. We have a limited supply of the double B design. Let me pull one of these out to show you. How cute, again, isn't that adorable? And like I said, these are these would make a great just decorative accent piece, a trinket dish, or I plan to use them on my table as individual salt cellars when I set my Easter table. We have this precious little pansy design. Let me get one of these out for you. We have this beautiful little pansy. I love pansies. When I was a little girl, my mom used to tell me that they have little faces in them, and indeed they do. So we have those. And then this final design is so perfect for Easter. Look at this little pair of bunnies inside that egg. How adorable is that? And again, it is it is an oyster shell, it's an all natural one, and it has this such a cute little design on the inside. So that's just a quick update of some of the things that we'll be carrying on the shop. And as I said, I'll put the address of our shop right there. We appreciate all of you who have purchased through our shop. We have such a fun time stocking it and picking out the items that we love and that we think that our viewers would love. So be on the lookout for our spring shop. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. 
If you've already subscribed, you don't need to hit it again. You'll be subscribed forever. You can hit the notification bell though, and then you will get a notification whenever we upload a new video. We are really trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by summertime, so if you could help us toward our goal, we'd really appreciate it. All right, everyone, take care, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.